Thanks everyone for joining us today. My name is Elias Panasiak. I'm one of the program leaders for EcoStructure and Power Process here at Schneider Electric. This is a program that came about through our multiple acquisitions within the electrical space, within automation, within software and energy management, bringing together the best of the best when it comes to technology, services, engineering best practices, and of course, your team here at Schneider Electric. As we've moved through this journey uh, for both our integration strategies as an organization, and of course, partnering uh, with key customers throughout, what we've found is there's several areas of focus where we can drive value for both capital efficiency and operational efficiency throughout the entire life cycle of an asset. A key component of this entire strategy has really been that close voice of customer as we've continued to develop technologies, develop services, and put together roadmaps that are centered around power and process integration, and of course, with a digital thread throughout all of that. As we've brought forward these different integration strategies, what we found is a very clear common thread in terms of both where our customers have been, and then of course, in the new operating realities uh, that we're all faced with as, as we're, of course, talking to you virtually today. This has really become a critical factor of success, not only in how operations are managed, but in how we are overall as an industry putting together our capital projects and what processes and procedures need to support those overall ambitions when we have a new greenfield operation or facility that we're taking a look at. What we've also found is through our customers' journeys and their own integrations, not just through power and process disciplines and through a, a project life cycle, but also their own integrations when it comes to acquisitions, when it comes to mergers, when it comes to business model changes. All of this has really created momentum, a momentum, a focus, and a drive towards operating more efficiently, but thinking differently, and what is really required from a people perspective to support all of this. So as we stated, really the, the goal of this program and how this came about was based on direct feedback from our customers. Uh, and one of our key partners and customers is ExxonMobil. And we have the pleasure of being joined uh, by Sandy Vassar, uh, who led a lot of this effort from an ExxonMobil perspective uh, and continues to contribute uh, to what we're doing here at Schneider Electric. So thanks, Sandy, for joining us. Thanks very much for having me. Could you maybe share a little bit of your background from, from your history with ExxonMobil? Yes, I've been retired for about five years. I spent uh, 38 years with Exxon and ExxonMobil. About the last 15 years or so, I was part of an organization that was created to steward the upstream projects uh, globally. And so I led a group of instrument and electrical engineers that were responsible for all of the project activities uh, around the globe. Fantastic, thanks for that. And, and again, thanks for joining. And so, so curious from your experience and, and of course your, your contributions, um, both at, from an Exxon standpoint and how you've contributed to this program, you know, what does, how does an integrated approach make sense to, to these large, complex organizations like Exxon, where, of course, you've also assembled a very deep uh, level of skill set in, in your own engineering bench, your own operations teams, uh, in terms of that support. You know, how does how does that that help and fit within that business model? Well, what we um, learned in the current age of a global, complicated mega projects, it's simply not enough to be good at delivering projects the way they've always been delivered. Yeah. The, uh, the historical processes work fine for local, smaller projects, but are simply outdated and ineffective for the current class of projects. What, what uh, owners should be do doing is literally uh, challenging every process, procedure, design practice to identify Identify opportunities to eliminate processes, to automate pro processes, or to simplify processes. And the, the benefit of doing that is that it can significantly shorten schedules, 
which will reduce the cost of the projects. One of the biggest components to project cost is the amount of time that you've got to maintain a large project team. It also allows the owner to realize the benefits of the project earlier. Second, it can improve the quality of the project by eliminating interfaces and a lot of manual activities. You can in, in, improve the the uh, the quality of the of the final project. And third, the uh, owner and the engineering contract staff can focus on other aspects of the project to make them successful. And lastly, it can allow the users and the engineering contractors to manage more projects. So in the early 2000s, Exxon established a new organization. And this organization was responsible for delivering the upstream projects globally. We focused on, on executing the projects. We believe that if we simply perfected the processes that we'd been following for decades and we contracted the best EPCs and the best suppliers, we would be successful. We, we realized that that simply wasn't enough. The process and procedures that we had used on much smaller projects, less complicated projects, and more local projects simply didn't work for the current class of projects. So we took a different approach. We literally challenge every process and procedure and every design practice. We described each of the problems in detail. And then we met with all of our key suppliers, including Schneider, to find new approaches to um, make our project successful. And so uh, by doing that, we came up with uh, innovative ways to deliver the projects. So in the case of automation, we adopted universal IO. That that product was developed by the suppliers. We also adopted virtual FATs. And uh, the suppliers developed automatic commissioning. In the electrical area, we adopted complete vendor standard solutions without any customization. We moved all of the control within the electrical facilities over to the process control system. So for things such as load shedding, that was put in the process control system and, and we eliminated all of the dedicated hardware within the electrical gear. The net result was that we compressed schedules by 30%. We reduced uh, much of the hardware required for the systems. We uh, reduced engineering by 30 to 50 percent, commissioning by 30 to 50 percent, and adopting those new approaches uh, allowed us to d deliver these projects without having to go to extraordinary measures. That's fascinating, Sandy. I mean, when you think about the efficiency gains that you just mentioned and and the journey really the uh, the transformation from an internal perspective and again as you mentioned working with us working with your your epcs and other suppliers to help drive that i mean a tremendous amount of effort uh, but being able to realize you know those efficiency gains through it you know really help justify these these types of investments you know i i think often about how we how we collectively in the industry address digital transformation and to be frank it's often centered around technology um, but what you've you've continued to reinforce here was around processes, around how you were empowering your teams and and su suppliers, sub suppliers to work together, which are individuals, the individuals who are responsible for execution. That's real transformation, from what I'm hearing, is is around the people. And I'm curious, you know, as you've brought these things together and and led this level of of uh, people transformation uh, around the organization. You know how you've uh, been able to to really take that approach because that's not a that's not a small task, right? With all those different stakeholders, 
getting people aligned around a common goal. You know, how did you approach that? What was your experience there? Well, first of all, as you pointed out, we didn't implement these things simply because they were new technologies. We didn't we didn't start from the technologies and then look for the the problems to solve. We did it the other way around. So we spent a lot of time describing the problems in detail, all of the inefficiencies in the processes, all of those activities that required a lot of resources, all those activities that in involved a lot of rework and we just we described all of those in detail and then we met with folks like schneider to look for the solutions you know what what we believed was we're good at describing the problems we're not necessarily the best at coming up with the commercial solution and we, we relied on the suppliers to do that one other thing that we wanted to do is that we we literally wanted to change the industry we didn't just want to change the way ExxonMobil did it. We wanted to change the way the industry did it. And the reason for that is that we believe that we would benefit from the industry solutions. If the EPCs adopted the solutions and they did it with all of their customers, when they did it with us, they would do it much better. We were also worried about the cost of these innovations. If we were if we were asking our suppliers to develop something specifically for us, we're a large customer, but we're not a large market share, which means that uh, the solutions probably wouldn't be sustained. They wouldn't be continuously improved. And we would consume all of the costs for the product development. And so the approach that we took is that we wanted industry solutions. We wanted something that everyone would use. And so we believed that we would get products that would be sustained. We would get products that would be continuously improved. And the cost of the development would be spread out over all of the users and not just us. The other, the other benefit that we saw was in the, the time frame for commercializing the products. If it was just for us, it would be developed, but probably not at the pace that we wanted them developed. If it was a product that could be sold to all of Schneider's uh, customers, the uh, amount of potential business would be significantly higher. And so what we saw is the development of these technologies, new processes were accelerated. And we got things within a few years which if we had done it specifically for us, it probably would have been five years or more before the products would have been commercialized. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that that point around creating that community of practice and really being able, again, to, to drive us, right? To hold your partner organizations to account and be able to generate that momentum. Uh, again, of course, there's a mutual benefit benefit in a partnership like that. Uh, but as you said, the the sharing of best practices, um, the drive for technology implementation, standardization, uh, coming from other parts of the industry, your your counterparts in the industry, as well as you know the smaller regional companies uh, that have that have really played a role in all of this. Um, I think it's a very you know exciting thing to be a part of and and to be able to drive that. And again, in in industries that, of course, we always focus and will continue to focus uh, on safety of our operations, safety of our workers, safety of our communities and environment. Um, but when we think about risk in that overall context, as you said, taking the risk off the table uh, around obsolescence, around um, you know only fit for purpose point solution type tools, that scale and all that efficiency that that we talked about kind of at the outset here, right? It's very very difficult to to realize and manage when you're your pigeonholing solutions, or or even potentially, um, you know, just just one-off things that that do serve a real purpose, but uh, scalability becomes a, a real challenge. Um, you know, I'm I'm curious, Sandy, what what advice you would give to some of your counterparts uh, right now around the globe who are managing these types of challenging transitions on behalf of their companies and really looking to make use out of that that uh, combined value of of power, process, and digital. Yeah, so I, the, the, I would make a few suggestions. 
first of all, the, 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 the end users need to think differently without the bias or ownership of the historical practices and procedures. And um, that the, there are ways to do things better with fewer steps, fewer interfaces that require less resources and less time. Second, uh, the, the end users need to spend time understanding their organization and understanding how they do their work. That will enable them to identify the inefficiencies in their systems, the unnecessary interfaces, and the unnecessary work that is that is required utilizing the more historical or traditional ways of doing things. The other thing is, as we've talked about earlier, is that the end user needs to spend time with their suppliers to identify what the hurdles are, what the inefficiencies are, what the barriers are, and let the suppliers come up with the solutions. You know, too many times the end user identifies a solution and then dictates it to the suppliers. That may work for one project or two projects, but, but it's a very costly approach because the, the solutions that a, a individual end user may identify may only address their specific set of conditions. And it may not be an industry solution. And if it's not an industry solution, then it will become a very costly solution. It will also be one that either the, the end user has to take over the responsibility of sustaining the product or paying to sustain the product. Plus, you only get the benefits of that one in, in, end user experiences. Whereas if you make it an industry solution, then you benefit from the experiences from all of the users, not just the one user. So I, 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 I'm a strong belie believer in that the users have a role, the suppliers have a role, and we should let each do what they do best. Yeah, that's that's very sound advice. And and you know, as you said, that that early collaboration, you know, that that sort of free exchange of information uh, and sharing of best practices to, con to continue to, to drive excellence on both sides of that equation, that's that key in terms of sustainment of growth and, you know, implementing something within your operation that you know you can stand behind through the life of that asset. I mean, it's absolutely uh, a paramount uh, in terms of a focus area. So Sandy, I, I really want to thank you for spending time with us today and you know your contributions to this program, Ecostructure Power and Process, uh, through your career at Exxon, your, your continued contribution, uh, not only to this program, but our other efforts within Schneider Electric. Uh, it's, it's always great to talk to you, great to work with you, and uh, we wish you success in, in, in all your endeavors where they take you. Well, thanks very much, Elias. And thank you all for joining us. Within essential industries like mining, minerals and metals, and oil and gas and petrochemical, processing plants, electrical power management, and process automation systems have traditionally been designed, installed, and operated independently. Digital transformation now enables the unification of these once separated domains throughout an asset's life cycle. This unification between power and process applications is a catalyst for operational resilience and improves sustainability across the value chain. Integrated Operations Center powered by the integration of power and process is the materialized solution of this business, operations, and technology approach. If you're interested in learning more about the impact of this integration, Schneider's EcoStructure open and interoperable platform, plus Aviva and OSIsoft software and analytics, I encourage you to visit the Innovation Hub and interact with our experts and demos. Thank you.